someone else jump on. Uh, I'll try and open it. Hey, everybody. Yay! Yay! There we go. For a short dress. Oh, I got I to gotta mute it. It's in my ear. There we go. Much better. <laughs> it's in your ear. A little while there's an echo for, before, I, before I can do that. Are we live? We are live. We are live. I don't have the We're chat. Live. Where's the chat window? It's over on the right-hand side. <laughs> no, I'm not on. And, hey, this is your first time. You do. House. What's up, Al? In the house. Yeah, I need to pop Hal. It's all about Hal. You know, if you have Hal, what else do you need? We don't need anyone else. Hal's with us. That's right. That's an ancient uh, saying, isn't it, Rook? It is. It is very. Yes. Dewey Cheatham and Hal. Dewey Cheatham and Hal. Dewey Cheatham and Hal. Wow. (laughs) He would be proud of that one. There's Judith. There's Connor. Yay! Yay! Hey! I just wanted to see the chat. <laughs> do you guys want to know a little secret about Red Dirt D&D? Oh, I do. Yes. Okay. So, oh, you're talking I, to them. I'm, and you. I was editing the second half of episode 109. We haven't Ooh. gotten there yet, but I was editing it down. So, the second half of episode 109 was... 39 minutes long. Just the second half? Just the second half. Oh, wait. Was I think I know. 39 minutes long. Here's a little spoiler for y'all. There was a battle in episode three and half, last second half of episode 109. So there's a battle coming up. Once I edit that, now remember, see, I make y'all sound like you and, and, and Brooke and Johnny and, and Kiri and all of y'all sound like geniuses. Because you roll the dice and immediately know the answer after you've added all your modifiers. <laughs> 23. <laughs> it's like, right. You know what I mean? Why? Because I have edited out the. Uh, Seven, eight, nine. I, I, I add that. Okay. I like watching the, con- the, the way Connor counts. <laughs> I take all that stuff out and immediately give the answer. I want the dice down, and I want the answer. That's all I really care about. So once I have edited it down, just take a guess as to how long the second half of 109 actually is when we find it. Five minutes. Fifteen minutes. Wow. <laughs> I was, my the brain actually first, said 17 at first, and then I you know, went for the funny of the, nine. The entire episode 109 is an hour and ten minutes long. <laughs> when I finished editing it down, it's 32 minutes. That's how much gets edited out. A lot of that also ends up in the outtakes. <laughs> that was my first thought, was that there was some pretty good banter shenanigans, there if I'm thinking of that particular battle. There was, there was, some, there was some great <laughs> stuff in there. So, so, yeah, just a little bit of insider knowledge to all those who are watching our YouTube show right now. That Yeah, I edit down a lot because, because I wanted to flow a lot easier. And I take out any of the stuff that doesn't really pertain to the, the video and, or to the story. And a lot of the times I'll put that in the outtakes. But what, what's really funny is then there's a choice. There's some funny moments that still get stay in the show because it does kind of still have to do with the, the story. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what, what do I go? So what do I take out? What, if there's a reference, that's almost always going to the outtakes. If there's funny <laughs> singing... That's going in the outtakes. <laughs> I've I've <laughs> wondered chat, about a few. Oh, go ahead. What I was saying, I've wondered about. Yeah, the because <laughs> I know everything also doesn't make it to uh, to uh, to an outtake. Uh, but it's fun to like watch. Like right when the episode ends, I'll look over the clock and see like how long the outtakes are this time. And it, it, it's curious to like when like like. <laughs> Page flippings to find rules and things like that are, are popping up, you know, and, and end up on the floor. But yeah, anyway, go ahead, Brooke. I'm just gonna say, Ginger Hathlet is in the house. Woo. Yep, I can see her in the chat. I'm not grounded, Ginger <laughs> Hathling. <laughs> oh my Hallie's gosh! Disillusion. How is disillusion? Because you don't think we're all geniuses, right? <laughs> well, and, and of course, then I introduced Johnny to the outtakes, and now Johnny actually does things that he's like. This is going in the outtakes right now. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's whenever it's it's when we're stopped 
to like look up a rule and I'm like this one's for Michael to put in the outtakes. <laughs> I'll just start to sing. My so, so, sometimes I'll pick my lab up real God. quiet. Like, so, oh, oh. we mentioned germs or how. It's like yeah, right. that's going to the basement. Oh, has that one aired yet where I talk to germs? Yes. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah, there's a... <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Sometimes I, I give you content you can't put. You came by with your dog. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes I give you content you can't put in the outtakes, but, you know, so... <laughs> We have done we have done really well recently, but in the past there have been moments when because we kind of said Michael's at the end, and then I'm I'm next to Michael to Michael's right, and then across the table from me is is Johnny, and and the grog nerds we have moments where yeah. where, where you know I I look I glance and then I glance and we're we're all thinking the same thing and we're like judging. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, like the round like table. Fun. Like if we were just if it I could, but mm, oh, my favorite, favorite, favorite moments and it has actually aired, so I can actually talk about this. Was when we we parked the ship outside of the city of Shada, <laughs> and Brooke and I look at each other and go, "All right, everyone, remember, remember where, where we, we parked." parked. <laughs> With the invisible ship that's yeah. amongst the trees, <laughs> all a uh, Star Trek. By the way, it, Michael Cross, What's that? What? I meant to talk to you about this uh, Sunday, Michael. Have, have you finished Strange New Worlds? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm going to yes. say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in the boat, almost jump in the boat with you. It is becoming my number two favorite track. Number two? It won't become my number one because the distant number one is uh, Deep Space Nine. It's, it's got to go hard to match Deep Space Nine. But it is easily becoming my my number two track. But when you say, go, is, go, this is my number one. Yeah? This then then you didn't watch Deep Space Nine, did you? Yeah. No, I watched them all. <laughs> I, I was watching, I watched when, okay, so in 1987, mm -hmm. when The Next Generation hit on our channel four yep. at ten thirty on Sunday night. Ten forty of the television. Yeah, ten forty. Yeah, the, the news. They did the sports thing on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I want. I was down in front of the television for Far Point. I mean, I watched and I watched it all the way through from that moment all the way through Enterprise. Yep. Every episode. So um, my yes. my grandmother came downstairs. Uh, I, I was living in the room that used to be the garage and it was fully converted. She comes downstairs one Sunday and she goes, hey, are you still awake? And I said, yeah. And she said, she called me by my nickname, which I won't ever say on the air. And she Bubbles. said, my grandma, my grandma given nickname. And she said, put it on channel four. I think you'll like it. This looks like, this looks like some crap that you would be interested in. <laughs> my grandmother had a, she has some language. I was like, okay. And I flip it on and it was, it was halfway through Farpoint. And, and I was like, whoa. And then when it went off, two original series episodes followed. Yes. For the next yes. seven years. Yeah. 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 And so I, so I watched all the way through and I, I did, I, I loved Next Generation. Of course, I mean, that's your, that is my first love because by the time I started watching the original series, it was already, already in reruns. So I wasn't sitting down for the first one. I was sitting down for the first and next generation. So that was my first love. Yeah. Deep Space Nine, I really enjoyed. Yeah. But it's good. it was and I, I just it was fantastic. And it would certainly be it would it would be my number two except for I still love the next generation. Yeah. It's my first DS9 love. was very standalone, I feel, because they didn't travel. They were an outpost. Yeah. Um, but and also it took a while to get going. Yeah, their their first their first you. few seasons. It was all about the hair. When Cisco got the goatee and shaved his head, <laughs> just like when 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 Janeway got rid of the bun, when Riker grew in his, his Riker, it, yeah. it's it's the hair and yeah, um, yeah. even so uh, uh, Dis Good. Disco got better whenever um, Captain Burnham <laughs> changed up her hair. It, it, it's all about the hair. So two things: one, you're telling me character description is important. Right, you know, he's got to build that thing. And the second thing I was going to ask was compare, brace, uh, compare the new Trek, New Worlds, to up to season one of DS Nine. I think 
Oh, Strange New World. Strange New World is, is the best first season of Star Trek outside of the original series because it was it was it was what it was right. for its time. If you know, if it was a, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think it was better than Discovery's first season. It was better oh, than yeah. Enterprise's first season. It was better than TNG's first season for sure. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely DS9's first season. Um, I mean, Come Along Home was in the first season of Deep Space Nine. That was that terrible episode where they had to play hopscotch and. They were inside of a living game, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's there's there's no comparison. The, yeah. First, this is and and you know if you judge Star Trek by the fact that yeah, almost every show does get better after its first season. I don't think there's a there's a show that you can name that doesn't get better after its first season. Imagine where Strange New Worlds can go. It already starting out at this level. Uh, I thought mm-hmm. it was it was it felt like the original series, mm-hmm. but with today's technology. So, I, I, the writers are fantastic. We've got some fantastic characters in it. Oh yeah, and I love too that in the, in the world of New Trek, Picard did it, and it was kind of a given. Uh, Disco did a, we talked about this before. Disco did a really bad job of letting you know who any of the other characters were, unless it was an episode where they died. But I know the characters of Strange New Worlds yeah. right right from the start. They they let you know, you know, you, you, outside of Spock and Uhura, you also still know the other characters. You have background on them. Yeah. Nguyen yeah. Soon is is her character is. Well, as soon as they introduced her with her name, yeah, I was like. Nguyen Soon. Well, that actress was one. She was my favorite character in the Expanse. Yeah, that actress was. Um, so she had my attention, but, but yeah, it's, it's good television. It's good television. So you were talking about your grandmother sitting you down and having you watch Next Generation. So yeah. I have a story, sort of along that lines. When I was uh, very young, my father sat me down, and he said, "Hey, there's this show coming on uh, PBS on OETA. Uh, it was a Saturday night, and I thought, and he said, I just thought maybe we should sit down and watch this because I think it might be kind of enjoyable." So he sits me down, and immediately I hear, and yeah, and it was the very first episode of the Tom Baker Doctor Who, the robot. I was floored. I thought it was the greatest thing. So my father and I started. He, oh, I, oh, I think only watched that one episode. I don't think he ever watched that. That, of course, I kept watching it. My. I, I, but that was every Saturday night, ten o'clock at OEGA. I was watching Doctor Who, and my sister hated it because she got scared. Oh! And I, and I always had. We only had one TV. This is back when you only had one TV. You had to and, get up and change the channel. Yeah, and so she, and so she would always like. She got so she got mad and told my mom. I said, "Mom, you got to make him watch, watch something else because it's scaring me." And so my mom tried to get me to stop watching it. I said, "You know, mother." I don't think you can make me stop watching it until you sit down and watch it and see what the big deal is all about. Oh. So she sat down, um. and for the next three years, my mom joined me in watching every Saturday night, watching She Doctor became Doctor a Hoovian. Through the latter Tom Baker and into Peter Davison. And, of course, then by the time I was like 16 years old, I found out there was other things to do on Saturday night. But... <laughs> but I was, I was glued to it, and I... I you know, so my... I, my love of Doctor Who, Star Trek, you know, watching old TOS with my dad, watching the reruns. Yeah. My, That's awesome. Watching, watching Star Wars the movie theater with my dad. I gotta tell you, if I ever heard of a parent denying their child uh, Doctor Who or any other sci fi, I would probably call Child Protective Services on them. <laughs> and just make up something. Uh, Brooke, can you. Con- has to come out to your house. Brooke, can you confirm something for me? I will do my best. In the chat, Germs is. Uh, Claiming to have more than two friends. Yes. Can you confirm or deny that he has at least three? Well, the the problem is the witness protection program. So, <laughs> yeah, talk about it. You're one of them, aren't you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, no, it was, it was fun times. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, you'll hear it in an outtake where uh, Germs was rolling by with the boys. Um, short rests. Who wants one? I always want short rests. Yeah. <laughs> like you always want a short rest? No, 
now, uh, now, now, Michael Cross, I've kind of a, a, a leading question a little bit here. Um, I haven't heard or seen of you playing a warlock yet, but when you say I want short rests, that may, that, that sounds like a warlock player saying that. I mean, because they're really important for those guys. I, I think that they are important for warlocks, without a doubt. They are very, because a warlock starts out with two spell slots. I think they move up to three spell slots at like ninth level. Okay, so two spell slots, folks. I mean, by the ninth level, your wizard's got what? Twelve spell slots? Okay, you got two spell slots. Those come back after a short rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, without a short rest, your warlock is just throwing out Elder's Class. <laughs> you know, there are times though when I've played a warlock and the and the tens levels. And all I've done is throw out catchphrase. I mean, Eldrick Blast. Yeah. I mean, Hexblade and Eldrick Blast <laughs> and, and the right yeah. packed gifts. You With don't need to cast Eldritch spells. Blast. Yeah, Eldritch Blast is designed for that. And your yeah. take of vocations to make your Eldritch Blast better, that's what it's mm -hmm. designed to be. It is, you are Eldritch Blast. But other things, like Hex, and there's, there's other spells out there that you've got to be able to cast. And if you've only got two spell slots... You're kind of in trouble. So we talked about this uh, online, Michael, and it was like, well, yeah. maybe they're going to change up Warlock. And you said, yeah, but they're going to make it backwards compatible. So I got chewing on that for a while. And if, if the new version of 5e comes out and they have taken away short rests, how will it impact the Warlock without it, the Warlock being changed? But how can they change the Warlock if they're going to be backwards compatible? So let's give a definition, because I don't think Wizards has yet. Wizards does not give a definition of backwards compatible. Because a lot of like gaming companies or consoles and stuff will talk about what backwards compatibility means, and there's always some kind of limitation, or you can play it but you can't play it online, or you can only play the offline well, version, you can actually, only play story they did. mode. So what? They did mm -hmm. when they first mentioned that they were going to have a new version. Okay. That they when they said backwards compatible, that means that you could play a character <laughs> from fifth, the, the for original player's handbook, and be able to play it in this new edition that's going to be coming up. Okay, so that means that. If I, that's why I don't. I don't. Where, where there should be. An, I'm sure there's probably an asterisk somewhere. I, there, there might be an asterisk somewhere that's like if you have a warlock in your party, or there might also be, hey, warlocks at level two, you get this free ability where you can re get your spell slots without a short rest. You get it by doing this other thing. So, and uh, again, we play both. In Pathfinder 2, there are focus points that are really cool spells, typically based off of a deity, that you're limited on how many times you can cast them, but they're super easy to get back. My paladin could cast them. I, I, had, I had two focus points and three focus spells. So I would, I would cast one, and it would do this big, awesome, cool thing. I'd do it two times, and then at some point, it's like, hey, we need to go in here and talk to this person. Cool, I'm going to sit out here and pray. So while the whole party's in here doing a quick diplomacy check with the, with the bookstore owner, my character's sitting outside for 10 minutes praying, boom, I got my focus points back, I'm ready to go again. Okay. Now, that's different than having spell slots, but I can see the war, if the warlock pays something to their patron, their, their deity, their, their elder god, whatever, their fey, they get it back. It's just the timing on when they can do it, which is no different than the timing on when can you lay down for a short rest. Right. That would be a and, wait, and, and yeah, and we're and we're, we're talking about warlocks, but then there's other characters. For example, fighter. A fighter is dependent on short rests, and here's why: the action surge, the uh, the second wind, the blade blade, the uh, battle masters battle. Things that he gets, mm -hmm. those are all returned to you on a short rest. And it's especially if you look at second win and action surge. If you only got one second win or action surge per long rest, that's that's not good. You need as a fighter to be able to okay. do that multiple times a day and healing and to get use hit dice for healing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise. If you take away short rest, what is the use of hit dice? They could add in a new healing mechanic that isn't a heal spell and isn't hit dice based. That could be like with a medicine kit or with herbalism, you could heal up minorly out of combat. Like like bandaging. Then, then, then that's a short rest. 
why why get rid of a mechanic that works? How long is a short how long is a short rest? It's one hour. So what if you could do it in ten minutes? Well it doesn't matter. I mean it, yeah. game times game times what's ten minutes to an hour in game time? I mean a, a I mean, room it, flooding, the bad guys catching up to you, yes, the dragon getting still, away. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, Stor- that's, narratively, that's, story wise, yeah. A battle a battle, yes, you couldn't do it during a battle. But once a battle's over, what is ten minutes compared to an hour? Yeah. I mean that's it, well, it it's it, it it's that in game time. Yeah. So it's not a battle, and what's in, and one hour gives you a chance to as a DM gives you a chance to have wandering monsters. It gives you a chance for other things to maybe happen in that one hour. I'm just I'm confused as to where we're getting the idea that short rests are going away. I don't know where that is coming from. I've just seen uh, I watched I watched one video on YouTube about it. Where the person didn't talk about like where it was coming from, they talked about narrative ways to work around it. Um, was was all they did? You can you can certainly as a DM take them out. Yeah, and the same and the I same don't... question arose there, which which made me think the same question that you had arose on that video, and it got me thinking: what if 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 there's a new version of Five E coming out? What's going to change? Besides short rests, or what could change, other than short rests, that would impact that backwards compatibility? I, I don't think there's going to be anything. This is my theory about this: is that it, there's not going to be very many changes as far as what we have right now. It'll be different. There'll be new, new characters, new uh, new classes, new races. I think possibly, but yeah. I think there's going to be a player's handbook to. DM's Guide 2 and a Monster's Manual 2 that is more up-to-date to what we have now. But I think there's going to be very little else changed in 2024. I think that we will. it'll still be the same game that we know today. I really don't... If we're expecting a complete overhaul, then it's no longer backwards compatible. Yeah. It's no longer 5th edition. Well, not a complete overhaul, but I'm looking for something like... How is my character going to... So, for example, I uh, was seeing somewhere in a chat that someone played in a game on Friday where they were like, oh, yeah, but I was using the multiverse version of this race or the multiverse version of this. And we know someone who is using the multiverse version of something, and it's created changes and it's created differences. There's, uh, I think there's going to there's be character changes and differences. There, there would have to be... Otherwise, you're just updating the monsters, so just update the monster manual. Yeah. And don't, I think, don't call I it a new version. Uh, right. I do think that they'll put out the trilogy, a DM's Guide Player's Handbook and Monsters Manual, to be more up-to-date with what they have released with Volos and Mordenkainen's and Monsters of the Multiverse. But that's pretty much all we're going to see. I don't think we'll see getting rid of short rests or getting rid of anything else. Yeah. Because I don't think D&D wants to stab itself in the face like that. I want to get rid of short rest for the reason that I, I've come across many DMs over the years who, instead of giving you any long rest at all, they'll give you tons and tons and tons of short rests. And then I end up playing characters that get nothing from short rests and need long rests to function. Right. Well, and, then that's a bad DM. And so it's like, well, if, if you got two things you got to juggle and you're really favoring one over the other, the game system could help clear that up by just having one type of rest. No, I well, but I yeah, but I think that's that's limiting your DMs. I think your DM has to choose what's good for the party. If you say, oh well, we're never going to have short rests again, according to the game. What if the and opposite you, was true? What if they got rid of long rests? I still don't think. Yeah, no, it's not good. And anything that required a long or short rest just required a rest, and then the rest was determined by an hour or by your DM on a situational basis. I, I think the, that the goes back to four E stuff, then yeah. kind of. Yeah, I think it's yeah. that. It's yeah. It's the, yeah. The, 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 the giving the DMs the choice rather than making it a an overarching new mechanic. Yeah. That gives you no choice whatsoever. That's no good. If a DM chooses, and there there's actually rules in the DM's guide about how to make it even stronger, to where uh, long rests don't give you all your hit points back. They don't give you you know maybe no short rests, maybe. You know, there, there are ways to make it harder and those are options for a DM rather than yeah and I don't know what's going on with Brooke. yeah Brooke is taking a short rest right now Brooke is taking a short rest right Brooke now. if you can hear this it is effortless for you to drop out reset reboot and jump back in 
Because we're just, yeah. we're just, you know how to get back in. We, yeah. I'll say that to him uh, in chat, too. But anyway, so, so I, I don't think we'll see that much change in mechanics. Because right now, what the mechanics, which is the coast has for mechanics, is, is perfect, I think. And I don't think they want to try to go a 6E and alienate all their people that came into D&D playing Dungeons & Dragons 5E. So, I don't think we're going to see that many changes, except for just updating things for 10 years later. Because things have changed in 10 years. Yeah. It would be interesting to see, not so much that it would almost be like a 6th edition, but I want to see more significant than monster stuff. No, it, it would be. I mean, yeah. the thing is, they, they can update, like I said, the Player's Handbook 2, Monster's Manual 2, DM's Guide 2, they'll sell them as yeah. a trilogy, and they will be updated to be for what we've had with, like, Monsters of the Multiverse, and, and, and Tasha's changing of the Ranger, and things like that. Well, you know how... Um, and the Blade Singer, and, you know, what right. you... You know how, like, from season to season with DDAL, you have to update your character? And and that may that may change a lot about your character based on what what changed in the in the seasons. I could see that being a thing when the new edition comes out. It was like, yeah, you can take your character that you've been playing for the past three years and convert it to all the new, and that would be it had to be agreed on and accepted, you know. But I think that would be an acceptable alternative. Well, I, I just think it's going to. I yes, and I think there will be changes. But I don't think there will be any massive mechanical changes to the game. Yeah. Because no one wants to. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they want to alienate all their five E fans. Mm. And right now, Dungeons and Dragons is bigger than it's ever been, and it's bigger than it's ever been because of Fifth Edition. Mm. And Wizards of the Coast knows that. You know, it's not pop. Yes, yeah, Stranger Things has helped having people come out and you know famous people coming out. Vin Diesel and others saying, hey, we play this game, we love this game. Stephen Colbert and others saying, we love this game. But people are playing it because of the 5e mechanics. And it's more popular than ever. And if they came out with a 6th edition, you run the risk of people going, well, then I'll just stay with 5e and I won't buy any more stuff. And Wizards of the Coast doesn't want that. I mean, there are people who still play 2E and still play, let's say, play, play 3.5. Yeah. And they don't want that to happen to, fit, to their current product. They want to be able to keep putting out product and for everybody to buy it. If they put out a 6th edition, well, they might actually split their fans in half. And some people will go, well, you know what? I'll just keep playing the myriad of games that are in existence right now. And y'all can keep on going with your 6E stuff, and they won't ever buy anything ever again from Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast does not want that. They want to be able to put out a book and have it just as popular as any book that's coming out. And they, they run the risk, if they go a 6th edition, of alienating half, well, maybe not half, but a percentage yeah. of their fans. And they don't want to lose anybody. They're a business. They want to keep everybody. Uh, I, I really don't think I'd be that big of a change. That is an interesting point also. However, if I wanted to play my Ranger differently, or the most modern Ranger, I have a book I have to buy. Yes. Yes, and that's why I think a Player's Handbook 2 will come out that will allow you to buy one book that fixes all that. Yeah. Exactly but what but when, that, Multiverse did. when that book comes out, though, so what's had major changes in the past few years? The Ranger... The well, they've all had new subclasses. Yeah, well, they've all been yeah given new subclasses. And and we've added the artificer. Yeah, we. I, th I think when that when that one book comes out that has everything com in it, there's also going to be changes we haven't seen yet. In addition, sure. yeah, so yeah, there will be things. Yeah. There will, I think <clears throat> the the, fi I think the fighter, the the, the wizard, the, all of these their their abilities will be matched more toward mm. uh, proficiency bonus, like they do in Tasha's. So I think that will be one big change, but it, and, and who knows, uh, you know, maybe they will say, instead of you get one short rest, uh, or excuse me, one action surge, maybe you get an action surge matching to your proficiency bonus. Yeah. 
So they, they, maybe they, could, they will do things like There's a lot they can do with that proficiency bonus. Yeah. Um, and then they learned that with Tasha's. And so I think the whole idea behind the player's hymn of two when it comes out will be, hey, Tasha's and, and Xanathar's, that's not going to be the player's hymn of two. Yeah. I want to jump over to the chat and I want to give some attention to the chat here. So Hal thinks we should bring back Thacko. And I just want to remind Hal of what Michael was saying earlier about all the editing he does for counting in, 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 within, within the realm of 20. So now you're asking people to subtract within the realm of 10. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot, Hal. That's, I don't know about that. Um, Kiri, uh, I mean, I mean, I yeah. like that go. I like that you. It, it would be without staring at the table. The fun. And I, I went back like a year ago and played a, a, an AD and D game. It had that go, and I didn't have a table in front of me. I didn't want it. I like the thrill of rolling a die, saying what the number was, waiting a beat, and hearing if I hit or not. You know, it was kind of a like a uh, edge of the seat kind of thing. Um, but I, at the same time, there are some people who would be very turned off by the math of it. Um, yeah. Kiri wants to know uh, what Star Trek would get her hooked that we recommend. So, Kiri, the hard part of that question is this: I feel like you should go in a chronological order, but you could start with Next Gen instead of original series. But anything that you, I, I feel like Strange New Worlds is a lot of fan service. So you're going to have to know a lot of previous Trek to to really enjoy Strange New Worlds. Um, I think you, you will enjoy it, but to really enjoy it. So I would suggest starting back with one of the older series. However, those first few seasons are humps. You're just going to have to fight to get over. Every series, even yeah. even New Trek, uh, except for Strange New Worlds. I mean, Discovery's first season was a lot of, uh, what's going on? You know, who's this show about? What's happening over here? Uh, why is that wrong? Um, uh, Picard, but again, Picard is a lot of fan service for the next generation. Yeah, Next Generation was great, but the uniforms were terrible. The the sets were the. I mean, it was just. I would I would almost say the first season of Star Trek: The Next Generation was had the production value of a fan of Star Trek: The Next Generation wanting to make a series. Well, but the beauty of the Star Trek: The Next Generation, the first season, is I didn't give up. I didn't care. Yeah. I. It was to me. It was. It was Star Trek. It was television. yay! It's here. Yeah. Yeah, in the in the moment it didn't matter. Watching it today I, for the first time, yeah. you're going to be like, "Ugh." Yeah, yeah, we did watch all seven seasons. My problem with get carry the problem with going to Star Trek the Next Generation or Deep Space 9 or Voyager or any of the other shows is it is a buttload of episodes. I mean, almost every se- series lasted seven seasons until you get to Enterprise. Yeah, and the seasons were the original television seasons, which means they were 22 to 24 episodes yeah. per season. 22 so, 40-minute so episodes. Theory, I would say, here's the thing. Just start watching Strange New Worlds. Just because, yeah, there's a little bit of fan service, but you can still enjoy a show. You don't have to know the past stuff to enjoy it. It's still good. It's still great characters. It's still great writing. It's still wonderful special effects. Yeah, just we just keep in mind when you go back in time and watch other stuff, you'll question like, why doesn't Spock have this and that, like he does now in these other shows that take place back in time? And it's it's weird because as the shows progress, after a while, they start going backwards in time. Yes, that's also kind of something you got to wrap your head around. I would just yeah. say, put on the original series in the background when it's over. Put on the first few seasons of Next Gen in the background, and then around season three, actually sit down and start watching it. And by background, I mean it's on while you're writing or drawing or doing work at home or something. It's just playing on the I TV do, in the room. I do. Do you think? This is a question for you, Johnny. Do you think that you could, you could, if someone had never watched Star Trek before, that they could jump into season three of Star Trek: The Next Generation without watching the previous two seasons? I think that if they are into sci-fi, yes, because they will know why that person just disappeared in shimmering lights and reappeared somewhere else. You know, else like 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 Brooke just did. Yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. good timing. Good timing. It was perfect timing. Um, so um, uh, I think I think with enough uh, sci-fi chops, 
Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't be you wouldn't be lost like you were a stranger in a strange land, you know. Right. Um, right. Because season three is really they had the better collars, the suits, the outfits, the cost, the um, the uniforms were better. The the beard. The, Riker Riker had a, a beard. Data's course, skin and he eyes. He, in, he actually had his beard in the second season. Yeah. But uh, but yes, they they brought Gates McFadden back. So the only thing I think a person would have a problem with is or that might be weird is um all the stuff that goes on with Worf. I think all the Worf storylines that are Klingon based might be like, why is this weird? Why is this touchy? Why I don't get because the original series built up that foundation of we are warriors, we have honor, we destroy nations and planets and if you're dishonored you're kicked out and their relationship with the Federation, and 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 all that. So, because also the movies tie into it. We were at war with the Klingons in the original series. We had right. the movies where we got the 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 treaty at Kittimer, the Kittimer Accords, and then we go into Next Gen, and there's Worf, and it's cool because we have the Kittimer Accords up until Deep Space Nine. Well, let me when, jump in there. Yeah, let me, let me, I like that because I think you you've actually got a good segue, Kiri. You want to get into Star Trek. Watch a movie. Start with the movies. Yeah, because it's two hours and you can enjoy it. But, okay, if what? you start with a movie, there's only one movie to start with. What is the movie you start with? I was going to say, as long as it's even numbered. <laughs> it's right, as long as it's even numbered. But this Wrath of Khan, hands down, yeah. watch. If you've never watched any Star Trek before, if you watch Wrath of Khan, you will walk away enjoying Star Trek. And you don't really have to know anything. I mean, yeah, Khan comes back, and there's some mentions of, of Space Seed and, and that kind of thing, mm. but it's not important. All you need to know is there's the Enterprise, and there's a bad guy. And yeah. it is a great storyline, especially because it came off the heels of a motion picture, which was so awful. Yeah. Um, I've well, even, watch I've the tried even, to watch that many times. Watch the even number Trek films, starting with yeah. Khan. And then from there, you and like Jerm said, you can pick any episode of Next Gen or the original series for that matter and watch it because they were very episodic. Um, the yep. first three seasons of DS9, I would say you could pick anything, but then it starts becoming an overarching. It's still episodic, but basically the final season was basically called Part One, Part Two, Part Three. You know, through the whole yeah. thing. It was, it was the, once they got into the Dominion War. It yeah, was. yeah. Once the war started. Um, Germs also said, like Worf getting told he had bad, his ideas are bad. No, Germs. It's like Worf being a badass Klingon warrior and never winning a fight in the entire series. I know. I know. Yeah, I that know. was he. He won some in DS Nine. In DS Nine, he like stepped up a little bit. Yeah. But uh, but and yeah, he, he next was raised by humans. So what do you, you know, <laughs> what do you expect? Well, he's he fighting Cardassians. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah. So it's it is what it is. Poor Worf. Yeah. The only character I, worse than Worf is O'Brien. There's a comic out there called O'Brien at Work. And, and Al mentioned it. Maybe start with the motion pictures. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Without a doubt. Uh, you go. You're absolutely right, Al. It's it, it. I think that's the best way to start because you really and even if you do start with a motion picture and work your way through the. The, all the films first. Uh, of course, it'd be really wa- weird to watch Generations and on without having at least something, some knowledge of the next generation. Actually, Generations might be an interesting one to watch before you start watching them both. Because oh, no, it's, no, no, no. it's a handoff. Yeah, but no, no, no. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, yeah. Maybe maybe I, I, get some I, under I, your I, get some under your belt before you jump into Generations. I hated Generations so much. I was if if you're gonna watch a next generation one again, it's an even number one. Watch. The, the Borg one, which for some reason... Uh, oh, First Contact. Watch First Contact. Because yeah. it's so much better. Yeah. Than, you know, I don't know why it was for the longest time the Star Trek was. It was 2, oh. 4, 6, and then the second one of, of The Next Generation. Yeah, and First Contact was great. Alfie Woodard was a freaking delight uh, in that movie. Phenomenal. Yeah. Loved her. Yeah. Yeah, so like I wanted her to yeah. stay. I wanted her to like not go back and and I, I wanted her to like come back with Picard yeah. and like be in new series coming out and everything. She was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so start with the movies. I think I think Carrie, that's 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 our, our our I think our final word on that one. Yeah. Start with the movies and 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 you can find them on uh, Paramount Plus now. 
all the movies, including Strange New Worlds. Discovery, if you're if you're into that. I had really, it was really hard for me to get into Discovery until yep. the third season. When they do the thing, it got, and I didn't know this until recently. I'm going to spoil Discovery for everyone. It's not a big deal. It starts off before any, any show that ever came on. <laughs> but then at well, some point they go, hey, we have to save all of existence, so let's go into the future and do that. And they do. They actually don't start before Enterprise. They, they don't, right, 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 yeah. But they go into the future. And then now the show takes place in the future. Yeah. The show was doing such a terrible job of chewing through the canon in, yeah. in ways that were, there's suspension of disbelief, and then there's, what are you doing? And Discovery was on the what are you doing side of that. And yeah. so they listened to the fans and said, they like everything we're doing except for what we're doing to the canon, so let's yeah. blast them a thousand years in the future and then it works and tell a story and it works yeah. great now they are falling into the trope of every instead of villain of the week it's villain of the season and yeah. it's the thing that's going to end all existence and the, uh, uh, you know but they're doing the best they can it's, it's gotten, but at least they can do that now they yeah. can do that back in the 22nd 23rd century right because yeah. otherwise like where was this when the, when the Enterprise was right so now? the way the Klingons looked in the first season is how the Klingons should look in a current season to them because it's a thousand years of yeah. Something's happened to them, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I, I, I really, I'm really digging Discovery now. Yeah. I was. It took me. I, I did get into a second season when they introduced the Enterprise. And and Pike, and Spock, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I'm. This is cool. I can get into this. But the first season was real hard. Real hard to get into. I'm looking forward to the um, next season of Picard that has everyone coming back. Yeah, I know. yeah, and I saw a headline today. I, I saw a headline today that they all got together and talked and said, "Hey, what are all of us doing? Why don't we all bring our characters back and do another show?" Yeah. So, so the actors are, are are thinking about pitching a show idea because Michael Dorn has wanted to be Captain Worf. Yeah. For the longest time, you know. Yeah, but uh, but there's that. There's there's our, the Star Trek segment of our show, which is about anything. As a druid, I don't get too too much from short rest, but I like yeah. the option. Yeah, uh, that's what that's what I was saying, Kiri. Was I, I'll play characters that don't benefit from short rests as much as they do from long rests, and then long rests don't really happen as much. And in, 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 yeah. in, in the in past games I played and stuff. Yeah. Um, and Brooks also get short rests. They get their key points back after every short rest. Yeah. So, yeah, Brooks uh, Brooks Hamster stopped running in the wheel because uh, yeah. he ran out of cheese. So I don't know what's happening happening over there. But what else we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the checklist. Oh, we're talking about um, uh, interviewing. So has anyone out there ever played in a game where after a session there's either a group meeting or a one on one between DM and player about? Hey, how did it go? What's what? What do you think needs to kick out? Does there need to be more action, more story, more role playing, fewer NPCs, or whatever? Um, we kind of have that with what we do, um, but we're too full. We're playing a game where we're expected to challenge the DM, and the DM is expected to give us a, a story to live through. But then also, we have an audience. So we have to keep that aspect in mind. So, so for something like like what we do, it's it's kind of baked in to have those discussions. We have them a lot in the chats and stuff and private messages. But uh, as far as home games go, have you ever experienced DMs or are you a DM yourself where you uh, send out a survey every few sessions and say, hey, would you like to see less combat, harder monsters, uh, more fights with bad people or, or, or with you know against people right. fighting you instead of monsters fighting you would you like to see more intrigue more puzzles um what's your take on that michael i know you i know you 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 sway more towards the combat side of things i do yeah i do i uh, you know my now the thing is i did i when i of course i always have a session zero and i believe a session zero we've been playing with the same saturday group for three years now okay and Aiden's been DMing, and then I took over DMing for a bit, just so that he, so that his, uh, so that uh, he could get Aiden could get a little bit of a break. But when I had my sessions here, so we still had our sessions here before every session, and and before every we started a new campaign. 
And I explained to him, I said, I am a combat DM. I love combat. Exploring and role-playing is fine, but to me, D&D is combat. And so I explained that to them, and they knew that. Aiden's coming in. He's already said we're going to be going into the Shadowfell. We're going to be going into uh, Ravenloft. But Aiden likes puzzles and role playing, mm-hmm. and so we've already. He's already told us this is going to be a lot more role playing. So, you know, yeah, I think it's important to let your players know because you build characters based off that. Yeah. And At the same time, though, if you have five players. And four of them go, oh, a lot of puzzles. Do you as a DM maybe go, oh, let me back off of the puzzles then? I think you should. Yeah. I think you should. I will say this about puzzles too, since this is on the topic. If you're running a pre-written campaign and that pre-written campaign, that published adventure, whatever, has a puzzle in it, I am all for it. If you are Joe Schmo making this up from one week to the next and you put a puzzle in it that you just made up off the top of your head, in most homebrew games... They're insanely dumb and possible. It's like, don't you remember three years ago during the first session when this guy had a torch and he went, eh? That should let you know you needed a torch. And it's like, how, what? Y- you know, some, yeah. some weird clue like that. Or, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I think you're right. It, it, there are places where you can find puzzles. And Tasha's has a whole bunch of them. I think Xanathar's has a few of them as well. Go, go with something that's already written. Don't try to write one yourself because it's just going to be... For one thing, a lot of times when you come up with a, a puzzle or a riddle or something like that on your own, you know the answer immediately. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean your players will. Yeah. Here's another thing for DMs. If your players have a problem with a riddle or puzzle, have your character... Have, let them, let, them add, let their characters make an intelligence check or a history check or something like that Mm -hmm. so that you can give them the opportunity the characters might figure out even though the players might not yeah if i think they're going the right direction i will i will so there's a time actually i was running a pre-written adventure and two people in the group were getting really close and two people in the group were not getting really close and i said everyone make this role and the people who were not getting really close in my mind were doing it at a negative the people who were getting super close in my mind were doing it at a positive, and it was like okay. And then once the roles were done, I I I, ex- I I didn't explain. I revealed the solution in such a way that I let them cut me off and finish the sentence. And it was like you got it. And everyone was like, hey, I did a thing, and it was it was a cool deal. So it's, it, yeah, it depends on how, how you manipulate it. I have to jump in real fast to Hal and say Shaka when the windows fell. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. See what I did there? Although he uses a MacBook, but you know, Mockran yeah. and the Airbook at the Apple Store. Um, these are Star Trek references, Kier. You'll you'll get them one day. <laughs> Mockran, his face in mashed potatoes. <laughs> the hamster, his eyes closed. Oh man, that was but, good yeah, stuff. Uh, but I think you should, as a DM, especially if you are running for the first time as a DM with a new new group, you should be always checking in with mm-hmm. them. Okay, how is this going? I right. Yeah, you session zero is important, guys. but check in. Yeah. Yeah. And it even says that in where does it talk about session zero? Is it Tasha's? I think, and it says. Several books do, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Don't stop with just session zero. Mm-hmm. Do a constant check-in yeah. with your players. Make sure that, that, that things are going okay for them. Also, because there might be something that you might have touched on that might have made a player uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, these are things that... And it allows you to be open to the players where they go, okay, that made me uncomfortable. To come right out and t- talk to you because you've done these check-ins. And so... Yeah, without a doubt. You are, you are as, as a DM, are not the adversary. You are part of the game as much as everybody else. And so you want to make sure it's enjoyable for everybody. That's kind of your job. Yeah. The uh, other thing I had on the list to talk about was uh, what Brooke was going to reveal what hair gel he uses tonight. He was finally going to tell us, but he left. So I think he did it on purpose so he wouldn't have to tell us his secret uh, to right. the to the amazing hair. Um, 
<coughs> Excuse me. So over in the chat, what do we got here? Uh, uh, Oxygen Band Ripton's Bud talks about Session Zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got Muckrin in a five point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hal. <laughs> uh, yeah, Van Richten guides talked yeah, about uh, safety tools, especially because that turns Van Richten mm. deals so much with horror. Yeah, that you've got to be really careful. Yeah, and, there's and, some that I I'm always afraid to bring it up, but there's some that I I look at and like I see like the the the, the contract that I think Monty Cook made, um, which I think is the one that we use, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe Ash can can let us know. Um, I've seen various other lists, and there's some things on there that, are, to me, they're head scratchers. One is I don't know where it would ever like come up in a D and D game, and then also I I don't know that like I don't like is is being hungry a a thing that you don't a subject you don't touch on in a game. I, I think I think the whole point with with Monty Cook was the fact that there was just anything. It was it was a list of everything that could possibly, even if it seemed minor. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't understand. Like, what might not affect me would affect you, and those are usually recognizable things. But then there's some that are just like, I don't, I don't know. And a cool element of D and D is, uh, yeah, the 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 goblins stole your packs. You're going to have to go ration for food. You're starting to get hungry. Take some negatives. Until you find something to eat, and that's you know on the list. Right. That's on his and if, list. And if, on, yeah. and if somebody ever had, and yeah, uh, shadow, yeah, uh, yeah, I've got, yeah, Monica's yeah. con consent in gaming. Yeah, I think it was just a list of everything, uh, and yeah, more than likely, no one's going to check that as a problem. But if you have one person that does, then you know you shouldn't get go into that because for 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 whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because, yeah. No, I, you, I, I understand and respect that if someone says don't mention hunger, I'll, I won't, and, I, and not to ask why, you know, and I'm not going to challenge it. But but and, but when I'm just like reading it to myself, sometimes it's like there's some things that are like I, you know, I, like one time I had somebody say <laughs> that they hated that you couldn't that spiders was on the list. It's like, well, arachnophobia is a real thing. Yes. <laughs> it's traumatizing for some people. So I get it. But at the same time, it's D&D, &D, and there are gigantic spiders in the game that, that you're not going to be able to either use if anyone checks that box. You know, i, I got to bring something up here. I think I may have just got this, and this might be an opportunity for Kiri to say, oh, my God, Johnny, you didn't know that, and it'd actually be a thing this time. So A yeah. Shadowed Heart Production. And I said, oh, yeah, Ash earlier. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they want people to know that a Shadowed Heart production is Ash. And then I see that it's a Shadowed Heart, A-S-H production. A -S -H. Is that on purpose? Yeah. Ash, is that on is <laughs> If it's not on purpose, you can say it is because it sounds like it's a cool idea. Like, how do I hide my name in this? It, it's in there. I dig it. I won't tell anybody else except for the Internet now. That's right. We can we can edit this. You can edit live stuff, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, we have a little button. Uh, Kiri does need something to watch while she paints. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so, Star Trek's good. Star Trek's no, good for that. No, no, not no, not historical dramas. I would love it if you started showing up on recording days talking a lot about Star Trek. Yeah, that would be fun. Michael, Michael, and I would appreciate that. That would be greatness. I I have a list. If you want it, I sent it. I gave it to Aiden a long time ago. And these are the movies you need to movies, not TV shows. Movies he yep. needed to watch. Yep. And this started with 2001: A Space Odyssey. Nice. And went. I mean, every it, and every movie, and even movies I figured maybe he had seen already, but still, I wanted to listen to him, like Star Wars and uh, Logan's Run. Um, oh, yeah. There's uh, there's just there's great movies that have existed since 1969 that you have got to watch to be a very well-rounded geek. You you must know these. Would you go as far as to suggest Red Dwarf? Red Dwarf the the uh, the series. Show? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. I watched that all the way through, and uh, it, I loved it. I thought it was one of my it was one of my favorite. Of course, almost anything that was British. I I'm such an Anglophile. Anything that's British, I am going to be all over. I mean, Blake Seven, for goodness sakes. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I, I love Red Dwarf. Uh, as far as uh, there, there's also movies that might not be considered good movies. Flash Gordon. Uh, oh no, I, I uh, uh, so uh, Amanda had never seen Return of the Living Dead. Okay. And it was terrible. And so we watched it, and we are slowly binge-watching the entire Return of the Living Dead series of movies. And they're go. all terrible, and they just get worse as you keep going. But you've got to watch, You've got to at least watch the first one. <laughs> Have you had her watch the Evil Dead series trilogy? I think she's seen them. I'm pretty sure she's seen those. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because those are, those are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, especially the Army of Darkness, which is... Oh, yeah. No, I have uh, somewhere I have a DVD of the director's cut of Army of Darkness where he wakes, you know, when he wakes up, you know, he's, he's, he, he slept too long or didn't sleep long enough or he slept way too long or he woke up in a whole different world or so it's, it's just they film like 17 different endings for, for yeah. Army of Darkness. It was fantastic. Yeah. Crawl. Crawl yeah. is, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing film but it's Crow's a great good. film. Crow is good. Because it it's but some of those movies by today's standards they wouldn't be considered good movies. No. Because no. Uh, it, the, the writing has gotten better, special effects have gotten better. Yeah. But they are the basis for everything that we enjoy today. The the Marvel movies, the Star Wars series, the current Star Trek series, all these things, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, we wouldn't have these things if these movies hadn't been put out. And they were not well received at the time. So, Sword and Sorcery, uh, The Sword and the Sorcerer, uh, you know, so many great movies. To me, they're great movies. Yeah. I don't know if they would be considered good movies, even by today's standards, but without them, we would not have the shows that we have today. So, as far as a base for what what do we geeks love, watch these movies yeah. because they're they're just incredible. I'm going away. Okay. Brooke says that he's uh, got rebooted and everything's fine, so let's get out of here before he shows back up. <laughs> <laughs> We're here Monday, Monday night. We are here Monday. We are here Monday night. Monday, we turn two. We turn this many. The big T-O. Right, T-O? We're going to get into ter Terrible Twos. Which, by the way, show up on, on on Monday because we might have some talk about a new campaign for Red Dirt D&D. There might be mentions. Very nice. We'll be talking about other things as well. But in the past two years in Campaign 1, so, Battle Beyond the Stars. I watched that just the other day. I yeah. was disappointed in Battle Beyond the Stars. Yeah? It was not as good as I remember it from my childhood. I I, I was... Richard Thomas was still okay, but it, it yeah. the ending fell much flatter than I thought it would. You, I was very disappointed in the ending. You know, before we wrap up, something just hit me when you said that. Kiri, and anybody else out there who hasn't seen it, and if you have seen it, go watch it again. The Last Starfighter. Yes, watched that because, back a few years ago with my wife. Because it's what we all wanted to happen to us. Oh uh, yes. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was that was my dream. It's like why is the spaceship not coming and picking me up? Right. To... I'm good at this video game. Come get me to defend to lead yep. the Armada against Xur and his evil empire. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's what he says. Whatever. I don't know. Nerd. Alright, I'm getting out of here, Michael Cross. You going with me? I'm going. I'm going. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, show up on Monday. Also, a uh, new episode dropped yesterday. Also on Mondays on YouTube every Monday. You have Secrets of Monster Island. So. We'll be here for that. Check that out. And, All right. and we, we're doing really well on that, so go back and watch those shows. What time, does, what time does Monday start? Six. And we're going long. And we're going until you guys get bored of us. We're 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 being that rock band that won't leave because you keep That's applauding. Right. So, yeah. All right. So. We will see y'all Monday.